In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as Father George mentioned, and as all of you are very aware, today, August 15th, the Holy Orthodox Church is celebrating together all around the world the Feast of the Dormition, or the falling asleep of the Most Holy Theotokos and Ever-Virgin Mary, the Mother of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's the feast day of our God-protected Basilica. We are the Basilica of the Dormition, or the falling asleep of the Theotokos, the Basilica of St. Mary. And the icon for the feast beautifully adorns our iconostasis, right behind, right next to the icon of Mary holding the infant Jesus. It's there. The feast of this Dormition of the Theotokos is considered to be the most important feast of all the feasts dedicated to the Mother of God that we celebrate throughout the year. So much so that it's preceded by two whole weeks of strict fasting, giving us another opportunity to prepare ourselves through our fasting for what we learned about in the Gospel lesson this morning. We fast in order to prepare ourselves for that one thing needful that Jesus was reminding Martha about. Martha, who was so anxious and so distracted over the visit from Jesus into her home, she wanted everything to be perfect. But Jesus told her, in essence, that the fruits of her effort should not be anxiety and should not be anger or frustration or distraction or sadness. He said, one thing is needful, and that one thing can only be achieved if we are truly prepared to receive it. And if we have that one thing in our lives, the fruits of our efforts will produce peace and joy and gratification and fulfillment and pleasure, not only to ourselves, but to those around us as well. Martha was missing that one thing, but Jesus said that her sister Mary had that one thing. And that one thing that Jesus was referring to is to place God first and foremost in our lives and to place our own desires second. It's to seek God's will for our lives and not our own will, and to become instruments of His will to the world around us. At the end of the Gospel, Jesus defined that one thing very clearly when He said that the one thing needful in our lives is to hear the Word of God and to keep it. And he called those who achieve this blessed. So fasting helps us to achieve that one thing because it helps us turn away from ourselves and our own selfish desires and it helps us to put God first. But it's important to remember that the practice of fasting in and of itself is not what pleases God, but it's the fruits of our fasting that ultimately is what pleases God. And we fast for two weeks before the Feast of the Dormition in order to remind ourselves to become more like the Theotokos, who was an obedient servant to God and who, better than any other living human being, when she heard God's word revealed to her by the archangel Gabriel, she chose to accept it. And not only to accept it, but to keep it. 
Jesus said, Blessed are those who hear the word of God and who keep it. And one of the most beautiful descriptions that I've ever read about the fruits of who Blessed Mary was and about the fruit that comes from the actions of our lives as created human beings and children of God, what those lives look like, comes from a fourth century saint named Ambrose, who was the Bishop of Milan in Italy during that time. Saint Ambrose said this of the Theotokos, that she was the virgin, not only of body, but also of soul. She was humble of heart, cautious in her words, wise in mind, gentle, an avid reader of scripture, a hard worker, and sensible. Her rule in life was to offend no one. She had only well wishes for everyone. She respected the elderly and was not envious of others. She did not brag, but was healthy in her mind and was a lover of virtue. She would never insult others or create dissension with those around her. She did not think more highly of herself than others or laugh at those weaker than her or ignore those less fortunate than herself. She would not look at or speak to others with disgust or judgment. She was modest, quiet, straightforward, and revealed the purity of her soul through her physical outward behavior and attitude towards others. He goes on to say that all her days she was concerned with fasting. She slept only when necessary, and even then, when her body was at rest, she still was alert in spirit, repeating in her dreams what she had read in scripture, pondering in her mind the implementation of her proposed intentions and planning new ones. She was out of her house only to go to church, he said, and then only in the company of her relatives. Otherwise, she seldom appeared outside her home in the company of others. And he finishes by saying, she was her own best overseer. Or in other words, she was her own person. A person who was always focused on that one thing needful. And she could not be distracted from that one thing. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this is our Theotokos, as described to us from the words of St. Ambrose. And the church upholds her as the purest example of what it means to be a human being. Mary was indeed a woman of contemplation, a woman of focus, a woman, a woman of dedication, she was and is an example to all of us of someone who truly understands what Jesus meant when he told Martha in today's gospel, do not be distracted and troubled about many things because there is only one thing needful, to hear the word of God and to keep it. And if we hold on to that one thing, nothing can or ever will be able to distract us. And it's because of her example that the church recognizes and celebrates throughout the entire year, both her birth and her earthly life, and especially her death, her falling asleep, or her dormition, which we commemorate today. So may the life of the all immaculate and all blameless Holy Mother and Lady Theotokos forever be for us a reminder of what we ourselves should be striving for 
as created human beings, living in and interacting with the world around us today. To hear the word of God and to keep it. Blessed feast to all of you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.